Good day, Radio Rick Spector for Movie House Productions. As our fans well know from our podcasts, our major theme is Lost Philadelphia, and today we'll be exploring Lost Philly music, and frankly, the star whose memory should burn more brightly in the vast firmament of Philly music, South Philly singer George Bon Bon Tenel. And why was he called Bon Bon? We'll explore that question and a lot more. Today, we're brought to you by the Lincoln Theater at Broad and Lombard Streets in downtown Philly. And to help us remember Bon Bon, we're pleased to bring to our microphones blogger Mike Zerpolo. Mike, welcome. How are you? I'm well. Happy to be with you, Rick. And Mike, to set the stage, to open up a little bit, can you tell us a bit about your blog, Swing and Beyond? Yes, it's something that uh, that I've been uh, working on and with for about the last four years. And what I do or try to do is post something new every week, usually centered around a specific recording. And I tell the story of that recording, tell the story of the artists who made that recording, try to set all of this in the context of the times when the recording was made, where it was made, and uh, people seem to enjoy it. So the blog has been very successful, and uh, it, it basically concentrates on music of the swing era, although occasionally we go a few years before, and more often we go a few years after. In fact, we've done things uh, right up almost to the present day, as long as they're in the, as they involve music in the swing idiom. I kind of got attracted to Bon Bon listening to Jan Savitt and really most attracted by his uh, name. What prompted your interest, Mike, to uh, to study uh, George Bon Bon Tenel's career? Well, I got my interest in swing music from my father, who had a modest record collection, 78, and uh, this was in the 1950s when uh, you and I were much younger than we are now. Yep, sir. And uh, <laughs> I would occasionally hear him playing these records, and, you know, I gradually got to know a little bit about the various artists on the records, and one of my dad's favorite bands was Jan Savitt and his Top Hatters because... Uh, my dad, like many young people in the late 1930s, was a great radio fan, and Jan Savitt and the Top Hatters were very, very prominently featured on KYW Philadelphia, and that radio station's signal was received very strongly here in eastern Ohio. So Bon Bon was a singer, Mr. Yes. Savitt. yes. Bon Bon was many things, but all he did, well, I think he might have done some dancing as well with Sabbath, but he was a singer, he was a dancer, he was a pianist, but he's best remembered for his singing because uh, of the things he did before Jan Sabbath and after Jan Sabbath, and of course prominently while he was with Jan Sabbath. Mike, how did George Tennell get the nickname Bon Bon? Well, uh, he acquired the nickname Bon Bon in the mid-1920s when he sang on radio in Philadelphia as a part of a singing group called the Candy Kid. Now, that name, today, we don't want to probe too deeply into that name because it's like many names that were hung on African-American performers in those days. It, it, it w could be regarded as offensive today. Yes. But nevertheless, that's where he got the, the name Bon Bon because, you know, the chocolate or the, ca the candy kids, Bon Bon, candy, part of our history. That's the origin. Bon Bon was a guy, a very versatile man. And listening to his records, he sang in a number of different styles. Can, can you tell us a little bit what types of singing did he do? 
Uh, yeah, I think that he could sing just about in any style. He could sing in a in a in a sort of a straight ahead swinging jazz style. He could sing in a ballad style and in, in sort of in the mode of Bing Crosby and people of that sort in the 1930s. Uh, he could scat in the mode of the developer of scat singing, Louis Armstrong. Uh, he he was very versatile. He could do a lot of different things. Three keys. Can you tell yes. us a little bit about this group? They were uh, a, a group that Bon Bon led in the period of uh, 1931 to maybe 1935 or 36. George Tunnell, Bon Bon playing piano, a guitarist, John Slim Furness, and bassist Bob Pease. I don't know if you remember the Mills Brothers. Sure do. A group like Great that. Harmony. Uh, and they would do things with their voices in addition to just accompanying themselves on piano and guitar. They were successful. They were very successful. They recorded uh, for ARC Brunswick in the early 1930s. They worked in both Philadelphia and New York City. They appeared on radio in many places, including Philadelphia. Three Keys were featured as a part of a concert group that appeared at the London Palladium in September of 1933. From Arcadia, the international restaurant in the heart of downtown Philadelphia, the National Broadcasting Company, through KYW, present the creators of the music with a shuffle, Jan Savitt and his top hatters. Their featured vocalists are Carlotta Dale, Bon Bon, and the Three Toppers. It's a wonderful world I've got more than my share Baby, I must be Lucky through and through It's a wonderful world Loving, wonderful you Mike Bon Bon was one of the first African Americans to sing with a white band. He was a trailblazer, maybe like Jackie Robinson a little bit. Yes. Uh, for that white band, Jan Savin and his top yes. hatters. This was no easy task in that no. very racially charged time. How did Bon Bon overcome the barriers to do this? His behavior would have been very much, I think, governed in the way that Jackie Robinson was advice to govern his behavior in spite of things that were outrageous he just basically had to do his thing which he did and of course the audiences loved it but there were always people you know uh, unfortunately a, a small minority of people who did things and said things that made it difficult and like jackie he had to eat in different places than the band. He had oh, to totally. Stay different. I, oh, God, yes. Very, very degrading. Yes. It, it, well, the, 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 his world was a segregated world, a Jim Crow world, and it, it was separate and it was not equal. We'll be back in just a moment with Mike Zerpolo with more about George Bon Bon Sinel after these brief words about our sponsor, the Lincoln Theater. Well, loving Wonderful you. At Broad and Lombard, and born as the Dunbar in 1919, the Lincoln was Philadelphia's leading African-American theater. Shunned by the white community, black bankers Brown and Stevens built the Dunbar as a symbol of racial pride. Until 1924, musical comedy and road shows reigned with the Lafayette players from Harlem. Hard times meant several changes in ownership. The Dunbar was renamed the Gibson in 1928, featuring movies and tab shows, which were shortened versions of musical comedies. Reborn as the Lincoln in 1932, the theater featured 
first Tencent double features, and then top black entertainment. Greats like Duke Ellington, Louise Beavers, Lena Horne, Don Redman, Ethel Waters, Cab Calloway, Paul Robeson, Fats Waller all graced the stage of the Lincoln. Yiddish shows were even added to the Lincoln's billings in the 1940s. The Lincoln was demolished in the 50s to be replaced by a city health center. The Lincoln Theater, proudly remembered by Movie House Productions. We're back. Mike, share with us, what did Bon Bon do after those Savitt years? Tunnell, Bon Bon Tunnell left Jan Savitt in about the early 1940s. Many records made with the Savitt band, many broadcasts on network radio. So the result of that was that Bon Bon had a national name, and he could go out on his own as an independent entertainer, and he did that, and basically worked uh, through the early 1940s, leading various small swing oriented group. He resurrected the name Bon Bon and his buddies in the 1941-42 period, made some records for DECA during that period of time. And, you know, the quality was there. Everything was good. Of course, the country was going into World War II. There was a this musician's union strike. Many recordings could not be made in those years of World War II. And so the world turned. And Bon Bon, I guess, was sort of in a sort of a uh, suspended animation phase there in his career, as many entertainers are. Then after World War II, he made some more records for an independent label and continued working until the late 1940s when he basically said, I've had enough of this, <laughs> whatever it was, which I'm sure involved endless touring, uh, going all over the, uh, in a Jim Crow world, difficulties, just doing the basic things he had to do, and he said, enough. And at that point, really, he had been an entertainer for over 20 years. What did he do the last several years of his life. He returned to Philadelphia as a disc jockey on WDAS radio. Still around? Mm -hmm. And he worked there for a while. And uh, after a few years of doing that, he basically left the entertainment and the public world and went to work for a Philadelphia beer distributor as uh, in sales and public relations and did that uh, essentially for the rest of his life. What's Bon Bon's lasting legacy. Why should we remember him and not let him disappear? Because if you want to just get a fine point on it, uh, in addition to being very talented and very versatile, he was a pioneer in in the idea of African Americans appearing in public in an entertainment setting with white people. And he did that 80 years ago when that was a very difficult situation. Yeah, quite quite a man, quite the milestones he passed. Mike, to conclude, uh, you must have a favorite Bon Bon song. Oh, and, and why one, are you one, choosing one. this? <laughs> Uh, one of my favorites is Val Vistu Gailey Star, which it does appear on the Swing and Beyond blog. And I like that in addition to Bon Bon just being Bon Bon. He sings the lyric straight, sort of in a swinging way. He never sang the lyric really totally straight. He takes it a different direction with scat singing, which is just fantastic. I can tell you that when that was recorded in 1939, there were very, very few singers who were capable of doing that. Great support from the Savitt Band, and it just, it's a wonderful recording that's very entertaining, even low these many years. Mike Zerpolo, thanks for being with us to talk about Bon Bon, and best of luck to you. Thank you, Rick. Pleasure being with you. Valvis du Gailey Star, I told my lucky star, Valvis du Gailey Star, Lambelo. And now my lucky star is shining from afar, just like an angel with a golden halo. Manya, 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 see, manya means good luck for me, manya, manya, Lambelo. Ba-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-